Hi friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. I am super duper ridiculously excited to have you guys here today because one of the things that I was working on for the last couple of months of 2018 has come to fruition and I'm so excited to share it with you in this first video of 2019, how to turn your artwork into a greeting cards. Yes, if you guys have been paying attention to my channel at all, then I'm sure you have seen that I've been working on these little Happy Hawaii paintings and um, have been doing all of the things to get them prepared to turn them into an actual package of marketable greeting cards. This is super exciting. I designed the whole packaging logo, all this kind of stuff. I got I sourced um, these beautiful, beautiful cards that are like, have like a linen print. I got all these cute envelopes. I even sourced all biodegradable packaging because I love this um, beautiful island and I don't want to do anything to make it any less wonderful by adding any plastic to this environment. So I am so excited because this has been kind of a, uh, uh, not difficult, but you know, there's a lot of little components as far as getting a barcode and, you know, doing your layouts and I've had to redo things, you know, more than once and that kind of thing. So um, it's just very exciting to have this all come together and I'm going to tie it up in a lovely, nice little neat packaging with a bow on it, very similar to the natural raffia <laughs> bow I've got on my packaging and show you exactly how to turn your own artwork into greeting cards. Now. I'm going to show you the whole end of how I, like I said, made this turn into this. Um, I do have a series coming out sometime this year, well, in the next few months I should say, um, about how to get your artwork seen by more people and in that I'm going to talk about how to actually get something like this into stores. So I'm not going to do that in this video. Right now I'm just going to show you how to make your artwork into a package of greeting cards. I really hope you learned something. I know I sure have during this process. This is the first time I've ever done something quite like this. So um, I'm going to discuss with you just a little bit about what made me start doing this because if you're looking at this you're probably like this is very different than the normal artwork you post on this channel and you are very right. But I'm going to tell you my whole thought process about it and hopefully that will inspire you to be able to make something um, you know, like marketable, manufacturable, something that you can reproduce um, because that is a really good source of income for we artists. If you have to make by hand every single thing that you sell, then the sky, uh, there, are, there is a limit. Whereas if you can do something like this where you can reproduce it, then the sky is a limit. So anyways, I'm going to give you that whole process and then later on you will see a video on how to get those in stores. If you learned something, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out and it makes sure I see your lovely face again because I have so much artsy knowledge that I cannot wait to share with you in 2019 and 2020 and beyond. So mwah, I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Before I get started showing you how I made these greeting cards, I'd like to touch briefly on the why. I have been given the advice a few years ago by an amazing business consultant specifically for fine artists that I should look into avenues of reproducible art, either through licensing my images to another company or by creating something that I could potentially infinitely reproduce. Now this is a very important source of income for many artists because if you have to create every single thing that you make by hand 100% then there is a limit because there are so many hours in a day and there are so many hours you have to spend marketing and doing other just random human being tasks. But if you can find something that you can make, as I said, infinitely, potentially, depending on how well it sells, then you have this source of income that can just go and go and go and you don't have to worry about it and you could potentially just be getting a check every month for something that you created one time. Now that business consultant was incredible and she had a lot of great advice, but one of the things she told me was to look around for companies that featured products similar to my style and try to market my paintings and artwork specifically to them. Now that's all fine and good if you paint in more of a mainstream style, but for someone like me who does a lot of figure work, especially with my three-dimensional paintings, those just don't translate well into cards or any kind of products. So instead, I took the advice of another incredible artist that I met not too long ago who said, instead of trying to find companies that align with your style, align your style with what is already successful, 
which I think is a brilliant way to design something that you want to be marketable. We all have the artwork that we want to create that is near and dear to our hearts, but if you're really trying to reach a wider audience, then you need to do a little research, find a target market, and create a product that will appeal to a large audience. Obviously, I live out in Hawaii, and there are so many businesses out here that carry products that are made in Hawaii. We have a huge tourism industry and everyone wants to bring a little piece of Hawaii home with them. That's where these cards come in. I feel like these will be a great thing to market to tourists as well to locals. And there are literally dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of potential shops out here that could carry my product. I literally have more places than I could even get to that could potentially have my target market, which is exactly what I want if I'd actually like to make some real money off of these. Once you have created your artwork, probably the most important step is going to be transferring it into a digital image. You want to make sure that you have your color correction game strong. I actually wound up taking high resolution photos and getting these scanned in because I wasn't sure which one was going to be better. And I, honestly, I wound up liking the ones with the photos more. This, of course, is going to be up to personal preference, but I felt like the scans were a bit garish and some of the lighter values disappeared, whereas the photos I was able to get much closer to the originals and bring out the brightness very nicely. Now once you have everything color corrected to your liking, you're going to need to turn your images into clear backed PNG images. Now I do not know how to do that kind of thing, so I use my trusty site Fiverr. I go on here, I look up for background removal, and there will literally be dozens and dozens of people that can help you out for excellent prices. Here are a few of my PNG images on this black background, which illustrates that they do not have anything around them. They stop where the end of the paint stops, and that way, when I get them printed on cards, they're going to look like they have their lovely watercolor edges, and you're not going to get any edges of the original image. Once you have collected all of your clear backed PNG images, you're going to want to go ahead and format your cards. Now I have used the program canva.com for this. It is free and super simple to use. I highly recommend it. As you can see on my cards, I have decided to add the little title of what each one represents as well as its Hawaiian translation. I feel like this stays aligned with my target audience wanting to bring a little bit of aloha home with them. Now I think it is wise to go ahead and source your printer before creating your layout. That way you have the exact measurements that the printer is looking for. Mine are going to be 4.25 by 5.5 inches, which means that the actual proof is going to need to be twice as long to account for the front and back at 8.5 inches by 5.5 inches. And let me tell you folks, when your image comes back from the printers and it has printed off perfectly and looks so vibrant and gorgeous, you are going to be so grateful that you took the time to format it and color correct it as nicely as you did. But the fun is not over yet, folks, because you still need to design your logo as well as your insert and or tag. Now for mine, in keeping with the Hawaii theme, I have decided to make my cards blank on the inside, but include a list of common greetings along with their Hawaiian translation so that purchasers of my cards can write their own Hawaiian greetings. I love this idea. I think it is so much fun and that way these cards can be used all year round. Now you're going to want to make sure to include all pertinent information on there. I have my little logo created with Aloha by an Oahu based artist. That way when people purchase these they know that they are buying something of Hawaii from someone who actually lives out here. Now, as you can see, I've even sourced a barcode. Yes, it is very important that you have a barcode if you want to put these in retail shops because almost every retail shop uses a scanner. They don't type things in. I was able to purchase this barcode for around $10 or $12, and it is a unique one for me in the whole wide world. Nobody else will have this code. 
I also wanted to add on the label that the packaging is made of cellulose and plant fiber and is completely biodegradable because I think that is a wonderful asset to these cards, knowing that you can purchase them and not leave any trace behind on this beautiful island that we all love. I also created a small insert that will go on the display case. That way, as soon as a retail shop is running low of my Happy Hawaii cards, they will be reminded to reorder. First, before getting a barcode, you will need to get a UPC code that will be universal and personal to yourself, and then you can generate a barcode out of that. It was very simple and easy. These are the websites I use, but there are many out there. I decided to get my inserts printed at a fabulous local printer I have here, and I'm going to cut them myself. If you do the same, please do yourself the favor and make sure you cut using a very sharp brand new knife. Don't ruin your beautiful new cards. And don't forget envelopes. I found that these gorgeous colorful envelopes were only a few pennies more than the white ones and definitely worth it. It really completes the look with these adorable cards. Just check out the beautiful linen paper that these cards are printed on too. I'm so in love. And last but not least, this is when everything comes together. Now you're going to want to think about your packaging and how you're going to present your greeting cards. I was able to source some really awesome plant-based cellulose packaging and some natural raffia. That way all of my packaging is biodegradable and I highly advise for you to think about doing the same. Make your packaging as cute as you can and as eco-friendly as possible. Don't forget to find some cute way to present your cards in the shop too. Most stores are going to want you to provide your own display rack. Plus, I will have a laminated time to reorder card attached to the bottom of this. That way, as soon as the tray is empty, they will know just where to go. Wow, wow, wow. So exciting to see this project come to fruition. This took me a little over two months from beginning to end. And I just cannot wait to go on to the next venture of seeing these in retail shops all over the island. Thanks so much for joining me today, folks. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you soon.